raise the fucking rent so fucking high. Can't afford to live here, but y'all gonna bring some other motherfuckers here? That doesn't fucking add up. It doesn't make no fucking sense. None. None. I'm fucking homeless. I work a full-time job, 40 hours, and can't pay to live here. How the fuck are y'all gonna bring somebody else here? Don't make no fucking sense. None. All these resources that have not come to us, now you want to overly compensate right. for people who never lived here before, and they we yeah. need to be taken right. care of first and foremost before anything else happens right. here. Right. Yeah. Why would any leader put our black communities already riddled with crime at further risk by placing unvetted non-taxpayers steps away from our, our seniors? Our children and our homes, we've worked so hard on our own to secure. We are at war, people. Our communities are at war. They are violating our communities, and we asking that we have, we across the country, we asking and we demanding for office of black America, or whatever you want to call it, to deal with issues like this. Uh, I did get placed on a wait list, but I was told that the immigrants were taking priority. See, that's a story that a lot of people don't know, and it just, it hurt me. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I understand we need to be humanitarian, but these people are, that my participant are third and fourth generation Chicagoan, born, bred, fed, and raised here. My grandmother, Mayrella Carrington, rest in peace, always said, Craig, Charity starts their home first, Always. and then they go abroad. Always. Politically, having over 500 people in our community would completely wipe out any interest we have. Many of these migrants have been dumped in our neighborhoods without a plan in place to monitor and house them long term. I'm not yeah. selling Preach. nothing. And yep. I keep telling people, watch that big you don't have to move coming if you up. sell. They gonna come in. If we don't sell, we gotta stand strong. And get a stipend, link, a free room and board, free child care, and some of them are getting social security. And when my ancestors were released from slavery, they got the clothes on their back. But yet they were told to be happy. So why am I and everyone in this country footing the bill for people who are non-Americans who don't vote? who don't fight in any of our wars, who've never paid a tax, and we're told that if we say anything, we're xenophobic. Tell me why. Tell us all why. I, I want to know. I think it's wrong. I mean, it shouldn't happen, but this is a, a U.S. immigration. Transparency, that's my brother. That's my brother. We disagree, uh, but that's my brother. Um, I just want to say anyway, what the sister said, I don't give a damn about no Joe Biden. So if that lady want to pass out something about that, that's her free will. Y'all can't be forcing democracy on people. She got the right, just like you got the right to say vote for Joe Biden. I got the right as somebody who represents formerly incarcerated person to say Joe Biden and Clinton 94 crime bill created that. And we haven't recovered from that. The only asylum seekers that's perpetually discriminated against in this country by everybody is formerly incarcerated people. They have 18,000 homeless ex-cons, yet they're around here talking about public safety. You don't even know what these men are. Then you let more ex-convicts in here in the name of migrants. But they want to tell you... That is the low, this on the state, it's on, it's on, uh, the, 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 I mean, the Republicans. All politics are local. Yes. Every in this state, don't let them fool you from the top, from, from the lieutenant governor to Tony Pragwinkle to the mayor to the police chief to the state's attorney to, to, to the aldermen to the congressperson to the state reps. All are black. You got 150 elected black positions, and our communities look the way they look. And if I say something, if I say something, if it's not with my brother, he just got there. 
They want to legislate for us without ever bringing us at the table. I did 21 years in the prison. What they going to tell me about what we need? They ain't never spent one day in the cell. But they legislate for your nephew, cousin, and son. The furthermore, ain't no kids in here. Ain't no teenagers in here. Over 150 murdered young men from ages 16 to 24. And ain't no kids in here. That's the problem. You old people, y'all keep voting the same way, hook, line, and sinker, without ever holding them accountable. And the very babies gonna kill y'all ass. These kids are these little wolves. Hey, ain't nothing else nobody saying no more important than this. Hey, hey, wrap your ass. Ain't nothing nobody saying more important than this. I'm tired of y'all playing games with these babies. These babies gonna start driving y'all, but they already doing it. They gonna kill you. I think y'all get carjacked now. 60% unemployment rate for 18 to 24, and you got money for migrants. Hey, 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 y'all, I'm telling y'all, stop letting these people rhyme fest. It's a game being played, bro. Ain't no way. And how we got guns, how we got extended clip, 100 round drums, Glock 6, cocaine, heroin, and the weed, 99% of all dispensaries are owned by white men. Y'all got to be out y'all damn mind. We should you cannot keep bringing immigrants in. The city does not have the money. You cannot track them. You ain't tracking them good at the police station. You don't know their name, but you want to spare them all over the city. It is unsanitary, it's unsafe, and it's just not right. And this is ludicrous. I'm a native to Chicago. I was born and raised here. I've seen the changes. Don't let the age fool you for how I look, because I've been here a long time. I have seen things just transition as if a lot of people are not important here. I'm not for the sanctuary city. And the reason why I'm not for the sanctuary city is because people have waited years to come in here legally, not just transported on these buses, dropped off in our neighborhoods, rays of crime, almost got hit several times just making it down here today. I am anti-immigrant, yeah. illegal, call ice, send them all back. Waiting across the Rio Grande for, and, and don't uh, obey our immigration and naturalization law. And to see another group come over here, it's disgraceful. It is un-American. And these rules that you have, the rule, could, who made these rules? When did our ultimate vote for these rules? When did the people have time to to participate in making these rules. And one of you all came over to me, Mr. Blakemore, we got little children. What about the black children in the ghetto? We got to make a future for them. These others will move them out. Move us out and they come in with, to compete with jobs, goods, and contracts and service. A historian Carl Anderson say that they have a negative effect on the black community. I'm strictly advocating for black people and call ice on them. Trump, come in here. Clean this mess up. The most corrupt city in the United States is the city of Chicago. And that's not my... Thank you, Mr. Blakemore, for your comments. Mothers and fathers of today, these are our children and they will not be targeted while you take and make a better life for a new that just walked into this country. Yesterday, $9,000 a month for these people. You know how hard it is? A thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for every child, every illegal immigrant child that goes into pub Chicago public schools. You give them money for uniforms and computers and all these things. We're not going to stand down, and we ask that the Republican Party come and sit down and have a meet with us. Yeah. yeah. Come have a meet with us. We Absolutely. all are against Absolutely. mass immigration. Let's have a yeah. meet. Let's have a meet with the Republican Party. Yeah. If Trump want to come to town, come and meet with us. Trump 2024. Come have a meet with us, Trump. Trump 2024. We are not going to stand by, stand idly by, while you starve our community. Let me say this again, you and our community, our, our, us as a people, period. Number one, I'm not a fan, I have biased remorse. Number two, 
for any independent candidate in the city of Chicago, any Green Party candidate in the city of Chicago, and any Republican candidate in the city of Chicago. Now is your time, because we are done with the Democratic That's Party. Right. Wendy right. Johnson, done. Governor Prisca, and President done. Biden have shown done. us done. what they think about the black community all over this country. And so we're standing here today to say, okay, if that's what it is, we win it. We don't have to support the Democratic Party. This issue will destroy New York City. Destroy New York City. We're getting 10,000 migrants a month. Now we're getting people from all over the globe have made their minds up that they're going to come through the southern part of the border and come into New York City. First day of school at Chicago Public Schools. The supplemental budget to give additional resources to New York and other cities welcoming migrants. Unfortunately, House Republicans seem set on defunding the Department of Homeland Security and shutting down our government. I also had a letter with Immigration Subcommittee Ranking Member Jayapal and over a hundred of our colleagues to urge the administration to use all the tools available to them to provide stability to asylum seekers and undocumented immigrants in our communities. The administration has the flexibility to provide faster access to employment authorization documents and to protect families by redesignating Venezuela for temporary protected status. I was proud to join Mr. Espaillat's bipartisan letter regarding his common sense idea. The problems that led to Venezuela's previous designation in 2021 remain pervasive today. The solutions my colleagues and I are advocating for are squarely within the administration's purview and will benefit us all. Immigrants make America strong, and nowhere is that clearer than right here in New York. In a city that's always changing, the one constant is that people from around the world want to come here to build a better life for themselves, and we're all the better for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, you want to say something about what's happening here in New York City? Sorry. Do you want to understand what's happening here in New York City? The well, schools are New York, flooded. New York is uh, welcoming uh, countless migrants who set up this uh, center here at the at the uh, uh, Roosevelt Hotel to process these migrants to make sure they're fully vaccinated, to make sure to, to connect them with relatives and send them on their way if they know where they want to go, uh, to give them employment counseling. And, uh, and, and what? You know where they're going on the tour because there are some issues? I'm sorry? The, there are some issues in the schools in New York City. There are issues in the what? The schools in New York City. What about okay. them? Okay, there's an overload of students and we need more yeah, well, we certainly need we yeah. certainly need more ESL teachers, and we need more help from the federal government without question. Okay. And one of the key things the federal government can do is to declare is to provide temporary protective status for Venezuelans, for Venezuelans who more than half the migrants, so they can get work permits immediately. Okay. And can you identify yourself for our I'm Congressman Gerald Nadler of New York, okay. right here, in fact. Okay. Excellent.
Rogers. At times so heated, police had to step in. We're talking about city council today and a vote to spend $51 million on helping migrants here in Chicago. CBS2 political investigator Dana Kosloff was there for all the action, action and Dana strong feelings all around. Yeah, Erica, and for many different reasons, among them the fact that this $51 million approved today is only a short-term fix and more money will be needed in just weeks. We cannot continue to falsely pick communities against one another. Deep emotional wounds coming to the surface. As black people who have been hurt continuously by the city and country it loves, it ain't our responsibility to take care of everybody else and anger. We don't want to have to recall anybody. We don't want to have to protest anybody, but we are not going to be ignored, Brandon, Mayor Johnson. Many in Chicago's black community and the city council speaking out against spending $51 million to house migrants, asking when will the help for them finally become a reality. And it cannot be put on the backs of the residents of Chicago without showing them that they're getting something out of this. Mayor Brandon Johnson presiding over his second full city council meeting had to ask for calm more than once. Will the sergeant of arms please restore some order? Police also intervening at one point to allow the meeting to proceed. Ultimately, the measure passed with 34 votes. Many who voted to approve the money, like 49th Ward Alderwoman Maria Haddon, call this an immediate crisis that needs attention. But, she says, so do concerns of the city's black residents. Why are black people in Chicago and some communities so angry? Why, why is all this kind of anti-immigrant sentiment coming up? And I want to explain to folks, it's because if we cared as much about black people and had over the decades as we do about everyone else, we wouldn't be here. But the money from a 2021 budget surplus will only last one month. Many older people say it's time for a long-term plan and some state and federal help. With that, should taxpayers be concerned? Um, I think we should all be concerned anytime we're having to utilize this level of resources on a, on a temporary situation, especially with, uh, with not a real sight of federal support coming. Hours after the meeting, Mayor Brandon Johnson offered no specifics. And we're going to have to dig in a little bit deeper in the city of Chicago, but that's going to be a collaborative approach. As for a timeline for a long-term plan to deal with this issue, there isn't one. Now, I've said this before. If you give me three meals, housing, child care, education, a voucher for $9,000, you know what? I come to Chicago too. And that's what they're doing. They're telling people and they're sending money back to Chicago, I mean back to Venezuela, to come to Chicago because they're saying, hey, the good times are rolling there. They're taking care of everybody. Now, when we have, when we have Venezuelans that are driving cars, where did they get a driver's license? Where did they get insurance from? And then you have Venezuelans being caught with drugs and guns, where are they getting them from? You want, you want it. No more money for you. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. No more money for you. No more money for you. It's lazy, you lazy. You lazy. No more money for you. I wanted to take the time to clear up a video that I was on that was going around where it's an immigrant that's in City Hall that called us lazy. It's going around the internet where he's saying, you lazy, you lazy. No money, money for you. No money, no money for you. It's going all around the internet. And I'm the woman that he was talking to. Sure. Uh. I want to clear it up. I ain't never been lazy. In fact, I'm a 30 year degree retired accountant. Uh. I was educated at some of the best universities in the United States of America. Uh. My mother paid cash 
for me to go to Howard University. Mm. I didn't leave with student loans. All right. I own property. Mm. Okay. Mm. So fast quest, mm. low pass, mm. Rosa, mm. De Leon, mm. get your people. Mm. Set it straight. Mm. They need to know who they're talking to. Period. That is the ears crossing the border. Ooh. Yes. Not working, working it out in your own country. Originally wow. sounds Rent for some migrants in Maine. Taxpayers there are footing the bill for new apartments built specifically for these newly arrived border crossers. Not only a free roof over their heads, they have at least, wait for it, two years worth of rent paid for. Yeah, I just looked out my window and look at these Mexicans up here trying to get in this abandoned building. Like they really trying to break this, like open this door right here. Look at that. And they standing right here like somebody finna come to the door, but they been standing out here for quite some time trying to get up in there. Y'all see it's boarded up. And they got that big old locked door on there. But they've been trying to get up in here. They got the kids and everything. Got everybody out here. Look, he looking on. Look, he looking right there trying to see. Then he go through the back. This shit is crazy. Look, look at him. Look at the dude at the door. They really trying to move up in here, baby. Y'all look, look, they the fuck just got up in there. They just got up in there. Hell no. Nah. Damn, they just got up in there. This don't make no fucking sense. Y'all look, look, it's more coming. It is more fucking coming. Damn, it's more coming. They putting their asses up in this building. And now he finna go. Y'all, look. Y'all, now I'm just getting back home. Y'all, these motherfucking lights is on. This the building that I was just telling y'all about. This motherfucking light is on. Come on. Look, y'all, the fucking lights is on. This is fucking crazy as hell. They got them lights on and they closed their fucking um, door back. Y ustedes ahora mismo está viviendo aquí en el Roosevelt Hotel? Sí, sí. Y ustedes están recibiendo comida. Sí. Reciben comida. Claro, comida. Dan desayuno, almuerzo y cena. Desayuno, almuerzo sí. y cena. Yes. Las habitaciones son cómodas. ¿Y cuánto tiempo lleva aquí en los Estados? Eh, siete meses. ¿Siete meses? Sí. ¿Y por cuánto tiempo ha estado aquí en Siete el... meses. ¿Usted ha estado ahí por siete meses quedándose? Sí. ¿Y es gratis, cierto? Pues sí, la ayuda del gobierno, del, de aquí del gobierno de Nueva York. Migrants are now demanding paid job training and also housing. As seen in this video, dozens of migrants pulled up to Chicago City Hall in order to demand these things. And I'm gonna roll the clip for you guys and also put the translation here. And if you didn't get a chance to pause these videos to read these signs, I'm going to read them for you. This is what this person said. We need safe living conditions. This next person said we need safe food and water. And this third person, you promised us safe living conditions, but our rights have been violated. 
And I don't know if the government actually promised them these things, but this is what these migrants are alleging. And guys, I also posted a video of whenever the migrants were also in New York City also protesting these almost same exact things. You guys can go watch the video there. But what do you guys feel about this? Are the migrants wrong for coming over and demanding things? Or is this just what they were supposed to do? They're showing up sick. Do you hear me? They're showing up sick. The issue is not just how we respond in the city of Chicago. It's the fact that we have a governor, a governor, an elected official in the state of Texas that is placing families on buses without shoes, cold, wet, tired, hungry, afraid, traumatized, and then they come to the city of Chicago where we have homelessness, we have mental health clinics that have been shut down and closed, you have people who are seeking employment. The, the governor of Texas needs to take a look in the mirror of the chaos that he is causing for this country. This is not just a Chicago dynamic. He is attacking our country. The sensibility and the civility of our country, he is undermining that. Preach. It's all good. We good. Yes. Have you given what's happened at the, the shelter this morning and what is you know, we've seen more ambulance show up there? Not too, too long ago, uh, Mayor Brandon, who we've been giving that everlasting work to, Brandon Johnson. Uh, who has been receiving all types of pushback and extraordinary effective political engagement, uh, especially amongst the Black Chicago is there about the unlawful and illegal um, immigration crisis. Uh, we know, you all know that Black folks in America are the most loving, kind people on the planet. We're the ones that fight for everybody. But after hundreds of years of still being in the back of the line, we're finally waking up and smelling the begonias and say, hey, wait a minute. If you're going to spend billions and billions of dollars for the oppressive class that enslaved us and they're still getting benefits, if you're going to help the Afghans and the Ukrainians and the uh, AAPI community and the legal and illegal immigrants uh, and everybody else, we cannot allow you to continue to just play in our faces, play right in our faces and pretend like that you can't come up with reparations for we who are the true founding fathers and mothers of this country who built America by our bloodshed, by our free labor and by our intellectual prowess uh, that clearly was unmatched and something that the oppressor was unable to do. We're not going to allow this to continue to happen without compensation for a debt, not charity, a debt that you owe us. Unexpected budget surplus, he will allocate $95 million from the federal COVID funds to pay for the migrant costs without any city council approval. Mayor Johnson briefed Alderman Friday. It was the mayor basically said, you know, we want to avoid a vote on the city council. And to me, that is not appropriate. We should have known that there was $95 million laying around that we could have used and appropriated for something else. We need to make sure that we have proper oversight of those dollars. In a printed statement, the city said Friday that $95 million would go towards the new arrivals mission, including leases for shelters, food services, and shelter staffing. When asked today, however, how does that happen without Alderman weighing in? The mayor's team says the new arrivals mission has significantly expanded government services, so using ARPA funds to replace those expenditures is an appropriate use of funds. In the last administration with Lightfoot, we voted on everything. Every expenditure of ARP funding or any other CARES Act funding, we always had a vote. COVID relief money was supposed to go towards relief for the people of the city of Chicago, not migrants that are migrating to, to our city. Mayor Johnson's office says there is another $400 million in COVID money that will be allocated for community. Turn the buses around. Turn the buses around. You want to take the little scraps of resources that we have Now, tension in Chicago is getting out of control as Illinois warns to prepare for up to 25 buses of migrants a day as state pleads for help from the federal government. And now the good people of the city of Chicago have had enough and said this needs to stop and these woke policies of open borders and we want to be a sanctuary city 
needs to end. So before we get started, let's talk about what the hell a sanctuary city is. Here's a quick clip. So broadly speaking, uh, it can be defined as cities, counties, or states with laws dictating how much local jurisdictions can cooperate with federal immigration officials. So there are 11 states that have made themselves sanctuary states and hundreds of cities and counties that have their own range of policies. For example, Chicago, uh, they have a so-called welcoming city ordinance. And that means that they do not ask about immigration status or use that to deny city services. Officials also are not allowed to provide immigrations and customs enforcement support. And then there is Clayton County, uh, that's in Georgia. It has a much narrower, narrower definition. Uh, officers do not honor ICE requests to detain migrants for deportation. So many sanctuary city laws revolve around ICE detainment requests. Here's how it works. Essentially, when you're arrested and you're booked for a crime, law enforcement takes your fingerprints, and then those fingerprints are automatically sent to federal databases, including one ICE maintains for unauthorized immigrants. Now, ICE can send a detainer request to ask local police to hold a person until the agency arrives. At sanctuary cities, however, they do not enforce those requests. That's the difference. And also, if you're an illegal immigrant in the United States, you can get driver's license now in some states. So there are many, many benefits. And in cities like New York, you actually get city services and benefits even if you are here illegally. Here is the mayor of Chicago at the time, Lori Lightfoot, who's not mayor anymore. But this is how deep like places like Chicago went, where even if ICE were doing raids to deport illegal immigrants, the city would do stuff to stop that process. Check it out. Lori Lightfoot rolling out Chicago's support of immigrants and refugee communities against raids by immigration and and customs enforcement. The Chicago Police Department are not going to be cooperating with ICE. That means we've cut off their access to our databases. They're not going to be uh, facilitating or otherwise providing any assistance um, in any raids, whether it's traffic stops, whether it's um, additional support. That's, I think, an important thing for us to do. The mayor says she has heard rumors that ICE raids would start up sometime between this Sunday and next Tuesday. Now remember, these people are here illegally. They're violating the law, but Chicago is saying we're going to allow them to stay. Because again, it was a problem in, let's say, Texas, right? They didn't really have that many immigrants in Chicago. But for, if you got up to Chicago, we're going to protect you, we're going to do everything. They're not even going to help deport you. You're going to be fine. And this all culminated where at one point in time, Thousands, and I mean thousands of people in Chicago marched in the streets for immigrants' rights. Thousands of labor unions, political groups, and social organizations joining together today for the annual May Day March and Rally in Chicago. And this year, immigration rights taking center stage for the protest. Eyewitness News reporter Michelle Gallardo with more on today's rally. A labor rally at Daly Plaza finished off the day for thousands of people who came out for the now traditional May Day March from Union Park. An even bigger crowd than in recent years turning up, especially in support of immigrant rights. Even though I was born here, I have to show them, you know, that I support them. Over the years, immigration has become the dominant issue in Chicago's May Day marches. This year, how said Daly College is an ideal location because it's move-in ready and a fraction of the cost of a hotel. But many in the crowd didn't want to hear it. When do citizens of the United States of America come first? On the southwest side, city officials getting an earful. How about this? Give them all these politicians' addresses and put them in their backyards, in their basements, in their houses. This meeting at Richard J. Daly College comes as the city, starting as early as this weekend, prepares to use this gymnasium until August 1st and two auxiliary classrooms on the campus through the end of November to shelter more than 400 migrants. This is about being human and providing humane spaces for them. I serve my country. We need to give these immigrants a chance. But the debate igniting anger about how the city for decades has treated its poor. We do not take care of our own people. There's no resources taken from our shelter system and the housing within our shelter system, as well as outreach agencies who providing services on the street. This gathering comes a day after the city council at a heated meeting approved $51 million in emergency migrant funding. That money only expected to last through the end of this month. You speak very much about the money. It's our money. Now, I've said this before. If you give me three meals, housing, child care, education, a voucher for $9,000, you know what? I come to Chicago too. 
and that's what they're doing. They're telling people and they're sending money back to Chicago, I mean back to Venezuela, to come to Chicago because they're saying, hey, the good times are rolling there. They're taking care of everybody. Now when we have, when we have Venezuelans that are driving cars, where'd they get a driver's license? Where did they get insurance from? And then you have Venezuelans being caught with drugs and guns. Where are they getting them from? It's an airport. It's an airport. Want everybody to know that uh, this is what they're doing out here. I just started over here at the airport. So all the migrants are living out here. There's no plan. We still don't know where the 120 million dollars went. This is the city's plan. This is what they do. Where did the money go? We don't know where the money went uh, because uh, CBS FOIAs weren't responded to. Anyway, we just try to shine a light on it as much as we can and hopefully maybe somebody will step up and do something. ¿Qué, qué necesite aquí? ¿Qué necesite? ¿Necesite ayuda? Oh, Venezuela. Oh, Venezuela. Todo Venezuela? Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, talking to him about what he needs here for help and stuff and everything because we're trying to get people. I can't stay here? Why not? Why not? Okay. Lo siento. Okay, that's yes, yes. Okay. 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 That doesn't make sense to me. So, I should be getting different type of help out here, not sleeping on the floor. You guys necesite mas. See? So this is O'Hare Airport. So they're upset about me being in there, but all I'm trying to do is just show everybody what's going on. You still have people sleeping on the floors out here at O'Hare. They're in all the police stations all across the city, sleeping on the floors. There doesn't look like there's any plan. And it just goes all the way down. This used to be one tent, one you know, uh, curtain, then it was two, then it was four, and then how it was that and everything, so just, I'll go outside. I'll go outside. The biggest city in the world has run out of space for migrants. These are Eric Adams migrants. The fact of the matter is, most of them are here and they're here illegally. But now they're here and they're citizens of the city. This is the coldest week NYC has had in months. They have no food, little to no winter clothing, and no toilets. These are literal shit bags. There's human shit in them. As citizens of NYC, we need to band together. At NYC, we need to band together and question the same citizens we gave power. When are we gonna stop living this lie? When are politicians gonna stop using human beings as candy fodder to push their agendas? <laughs> These migrants are homeless. First, uh, a whole high school in New York is having remote classes today because the building was needed to house people who came into this country illegally. So, what is the president's priority in this case? Is it? the migrants or is it the students? Questions. But if a working parent had to call out to stay home with their kid today, isn't this Biden immigration policy literally taking money out of people's pockets? So let me just, let me just say, I'm going to actually go back to your first question for a second because I think I do need to address that, which is um, 
you know, when it comes to education, migrants, the economy, the president deals with multiple issues all at once. That is his job. There are multiple things happening all at once. And as it relates to this particular question, question that you're asking me about in New York City, that is something that New York City needs to answer to. That is a that is a process that they took, so they have to answer to that. Uh, and a, as it relates to migrants and what's happening at the border, look, the president has taken this issue very seriously, very seriously by making sure that on his first day, which is almost three years, it'll be a couple weeks, it'll be three years ago, that he put forward a comprehensive immigration uh, legislation to deal with what's happening with the immigration process, obviously, and also the border. And this is an issue that's been going on for decades. The system has been broken for decades. And the president is the one who has taken action to deal with this while House Republicans So we see what's going on. We see the immigration crisis on Aboriginal lands. They come in here to a place that's already established, already built, already have a government set for the people, supposed to be for the people. This is what happened when immigrants came the first time they invaded. America was already built before 1492. We already had buildings. We already had jobs, working the fields, building. We already had a government. We already had a trading system. Aboriginal people, we must wake up. Everything is happening right in front of our eyes, right in front of our face. While we gang gang, while we play church, while we play politicians, they are doing this in front of our face and we do nothing about it, mentally nor physically. It's like we here and we don't do, we don't exist. Our voices need to be heard. Our actions need to be seen. We need to wake up. We need to realize this is our land and this land needs us. Come on, people. The game is over. We're surrounded now. We was already surrounded once before. Now we are more surrounded because they see that we have the knowledge now. They see that we know now. We need to see and we need to know. We need to realize that we are surrounded and we've been at war since we've been born on this earth. You see how they gave them money and didn't give us anything at least before inflation, you could have inflated the wages and let us enjoy stacking our money before you rise the prices on everything else. That would make sense. That would have made America great again. Putting smiles on families' faces here in America so we can reach out our hands to others and say, let us help you. How are you going to help a people And you ain't even helped the people that was already on this land from the get-go. <clears throat> it seems like you're trying to create something. We see the play. Now what are we going to do about it? Rise up, my Aboriginal American people. Rise up, Northgate. Rise up, Amaruka. Rise up. This your chief of Chiefs, Emperor Bakaru, and I'm out.